There are several ways to approach combinator effect programming, but I think one of the most practical techniques is probably something many people already do in the process of creating a reason track. This is simply developing an effects chain around an existing sound source. This is basically the same process as creating a combinator synth or sampler patch with effects, except you leave the sound module out of the subrack. So let me quickly demonstrate this process. I'm going to start with this sequence-driven Thor patch and add some effects and processors in series. Okay, so let's take a listen to the original Thor patch. I'm going to press run on the sequencer. And so there we have our source audio. So I'm going to add some distortion. We'll use a Scream 4. And I'll check the cabling. You'll see that the audio output is going into the Scream 4, which is then going back up into the mixer. Let me run this again. And so now we have our sound distorted by the Scream 4. And now I'm going to add a compressor, and I'll select a M-Class compressor. All right, let me run this again and check it. Good. Now let's add a chorus. Go back to the Create menu and select a CF-101 chorus flanger. Alright, so I've got to make one cabling adjustment to this. Instead of having a stereo signal go from the compressor into the chorus flanger, I'm going to disconnect just the right channel. And I want a mono signal going into the chorus. This way I'll get the pseudo stereo effect generated in the chorus flanger. Take a listen. All right, and then let's add some delay using an RV7000 advanced reverb. And I will select the multi-tap, enable tempo sync, and we'll adjust these tap times. Tap one to three sixteenths, tap two to six sixteenths, and the repeat tap at six sixteenths. Adjust the diffusion, reduce the decay, adjust the dry wet, and let's take a listen. Okay, so there I have my effects chain. It comes from the Thor into the Scream 4, and then from the Scream 4 it goes into the compressor. And it goes from the compressor as a mono signal into the chorus flanger, and then out of the chorus flanger as a stereo signal into the RV7000, and then from the RV7000 it goes back up into the mixer. Okay, so now I'm going to take this chain of effects and turn it into a combinator patch. I will hold down the shift key and start selecting each of the devices. Then I'm going to right click and select the combine function. And all of the effects are now nested in a combinator in the subrack. Now if we look at the cabling, you'll see that the Thor is connected to the combinator's audio inputs. From there it passes through to the two devices jacks and then into my effects chain. Then out of the effects chain, back into the from device jacks. And then from there it connects to the audio output back up into the mixer. And so that's basically a combinator effects patch. However, there are no controls, so let's go in and add some. I'll click on Show Programmer. So let's take Rotary 1, and let's assign that to this contour control here, parameter 1. So we'll take Rotary 1, map that to parameter 1. And we'll just relabel that. Contour. Then for the compressor, I'm going to map Rotary 2 to both the input gain and the output gain. So we'll take Rotary 2, map that to the input gain, 0 to 127. I'm going to reassign the third slot to Rotary 2, map that to 
output gain go from 127 to 0. So now rotary 2 you will see has an inverse modulation on the input and output gains. Okay, and then I'm going to label rotary 2 compression. For the chorus flanger, let's take rotary 3 and route that to modulation amount, 0 to 127. And I will relabel that chorus. We'll make the adjustment. And then for the RV7000, we'll take rotary 4 and map that to dry wet. Then for rotary 4, I'm going to relabel that reverb dry wet. And so now I'm going to take a listen and play with the controls a bit just to see how this functions. And so that's sounding good right there. So I'm going to save this patch now. We'll call it Distorted Delay. And so there we have our basic Combinator effects patch. And like I said, this is probably something a lot of you may have already done. And so you can easily go back to some of your old song files and look for different groupings of effects devices, wrap them in combinators, and then apply controller mappings to them.